This reaction shows an oxidation state change. What I've done is put some alcohol into some potassium dichromate solution and the chromium in the potassium dichromate is in the 6 plus oxidation state and what we should see is it changing to the 3 plus oxidation state. A 6 plus oxidation state is this really orange colour and a 3 plus is a more green colour and over time that goes even more green and almost bluey. And we move on to another one. Here I've got potassium permanganate solution, which is a very distinctive purple colour. Again, I'm going to add alcohol. And in this case, the manganese is in the 7 plus oxidation state initially. And it reduces down to the 2 plus oxidation state. It's just gradually reducing down at the moment. And it finally goes brown. I'm going to try and do a whole series of oxidation state changes with vanadium, which is in the 5 plus oxidation state here and is a yellow colour. And vanadium gets its name from the Norse goddess of beauty, and that's partly because of the range of differently coloured oxidation states which it can exhibit. So what I'm going to do is add some zinc amalgam to this, which is our reducing agent. And because I'm going to try and get down to a really low oxidation state, I need to make sure there's no oxygen at all in the, in the flask. So I put some solid CO2 in, which will then um, push out all of the oxygen. I'm going to have to swirl it for quite a long, long time. You can see it's changing to a green colour. That's not a distinctive colour from an oxidation state change. That's actually two different oxidation states. We've got the yellow oxidation state of vanadium 5 plus, and we're starting to get some of the vanadium 4 plus, which is blue. And so just mixed together, they're looking green. It's gradually going more and more blue. So that's a really nice blue colour. That's the vanadium 4 plus oxidation state. But we can go further than that. It's very useful to be able to tell the difference between different oxidation states because when you know what oxidation state a metal's in in the compound, you know what it's going to do. So in the case of the manganese, for example, when you, magne, manganese is in the 7 plus oxidation state, it will very readily oxidise things and it can be quite dangerous as a result. So you have to be very cautious when you see manganese, which looks purple, but when it's brown, you know it's already done its oxidising and so you don't have to be so wary of it. And so you can really tell what chemistry is going to happen by seeing what the oxidation state is of a metal. Okay. Now it's gone a green colour again, but it's a different green to the one we saw before. And this isn't an oxidation state. This is the 3 plus oxidation state of vanadium. I think we can go even further than that if I really shake for ages. There's a lovely purple colour. And that's the 2 plus oxidation state of vanadium. So we've seen the 5 plus oxidation state, which is yellow, the 4 plus, which is blue, the 3 plus, which is green, and finally the 2 plus, which is purple. And all of them are very, very distinctive. It was very easy to tell the difference between those different oxidation states just by colour. For some metals, you can't tell just by colour what the oxidation state is, but you can do a clear experiment, different kind of experiment, that will tell you what the oxidation state is. Unfortunately, there are some metals, like the one that I've been studying for the last three years, cerium, which is one of the lanthanides, where you get different results for different experiments to try and understand what the oxidation state is. And because of this confusion, you have to find a different approach. Although I'm a chemist, I really don't spend any time in the lab. I do all my work here at a computer, and that's because I'm a computational chemist. So what I do is run calculations to try and understand how molecules are put together and from that work out what chemistry they're going to do. And we do that by inputting into the computer information about the atoms in the molecule. Then we use quantum mechanics to model what the electron density is for the molecule. I've got some pictures of the electron density of some molecules I've been working on here. So this is part of the electron density of cerium trisu p. So there's a cerium metal in the middle here, and then these are organic ligands around it. And this is showing that there's an electron density 
on the metal. That's what that kind of cloud is. And um, this is really a useful thing to do, not just because it means you can do chemistry without getting your hands dirty, but because it means that we can really understand what's going on. So once we've got the electron density, we can model all these different properties and we can replicate experiments without having to go into the lab. And we can, more importantly, understand where the electrons are and what they're doing. So that relates to, say, the oxidation state problem, because if you do the experiments, you find that different experiments give you different answers for oxidation state in different cerium molecules. But if you do the calculations, you can actually see where the electron density is and determine whether it's a cerium 3 plus or a cerium 4 plus based on that.